discussion today, men and mental health. And let's first state some facts, even as we get into this conversation. Fact number one is that statistics indicate that at least one in every four Kenyans suffers from a mental illness at one point in their lives. And actually, this is reminiscent and also um, a reflection of the rest of the world, even as the WHO says that this is something that the whole world is facing straight on and also another fact that you need to keep in mind is that the 2018 KNBTS economic survey said 177 suicide incidences were reported to the police in 2018 now get this that same economic survey mentioned that 147 men were actually reported to have died out of their 177 by suicide compared to only 30 women. So let's have that conversation on men and mental health, shall we? And to help me do that, we have Eddie Kimani, who has lived the experience with mental illness, but also is a mental health advocate. Thank you for your time. And of course, Kiari Kimani, lived experience with mental illness also, and very passionate about telling your story. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Now, thank somebody God, yes. once said that um, depression is Kenya's best kept open secret, especially when it comes to men. Eddie, do you agree? Yes, I do. The numbers are there. Mm -hmm. WHO, World Health Organization, has its reports out. And their statistics are almost they're staggering in terms of even um, how worse it is. Unfortunately, we, we, we seem not to have um, consistent records mm -hmm. that actually support these numbers. But as it is, in terms of even the, the news that we have being broadcasted about the occurrences of uh, people dying by suicide, and taking their own lives, especially men, is quite astounding. Mm -hmm. But yes, those numbers are the representative of what is happening on the ground. Okay, and Kerry, you know this is not news to you because you've walked in these shoes. Yeah. When you hear the numbers and mm -hmm. how many men are actually opting out, are you surprised? Not quite. Mm. Um, simply because we have grown up, or at least I'd say in a Kenyan society, men generally have been imposed on to be stoic. Mm -hmm. So you're not supposed to cry, do not complain, do not show any form of weakness. Mm -hmm. So whatever troubles de bedevil you inside your head, they're yours to keep and not the world to know. And so you don't have any other place to take this pressure. So when it becomes too much, you end up saying no one will understand and death is an easier out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, Eddie, even looking at the numbers, clearly there are more men opting out than there are women. And the question is, what is it that probably helps out the women that men have not tapped into? I'm a strong believer of the fact that women have very strong coping systems. Uh, unfortunately, men, even amongst ourselves, um, it's a challenge even coming out and saying, I need help or reaching out, and as, as he said, we are not supposed to show our weaknesses. Even some reports indicate that there are men who would be happier going for a prostate cancer test mm -hmm. than going to a psychiatrist. Wow. If you look at that, and it's actually a proven report uh, coming from also a global mental health organization, which indicates that it's that bad because of the stigma and because of the fear that you might tell a friend, I think I need help with my mental health challenge, that that will bring out your weakness, that it will show you have a weaker side to you. Mm -hmm. And he's very right. We are wired, of course, by the society, how have we been brought up not to show these emotions. Unfortunately, we do not know how to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. A bigger general uh, and a very sizable number of us men do not understand how to embrace. And that's why you, you get the case of toxic masculinity coming into the place because we are trying to prove that stoicness, trying to prove, okay, I'm a man. And you'll be suppressing all these emotions. And these emotions should actually be working for us. Yeah. If our vulnerability should suppose, uh, suppo is supposed to work for us, not against us. But unfortunately, we've been wired over years and over time to always imagine I need to protect my emotions. I, I don't need to sit down with another man and talk about how I'm 
my well-being is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so that's where the challenge is. Women, you've got a fantastic support system, which mm -hmm. is uh, really works very well. And you're, you're good at embracing your emotions and your well-being. Mm. Sometimes very unconsciously, because that's how you're wired. You, you've been taught how to take care of how you feel. You can easily share. You can easily open up mm -hmm. without feeling being judged. Because the other, f on the flip side for men, is that we'll always feel as if we're being judged if we mm -hmm. showcase our weaknesses, mm -hmm. our vulnerability. Mm -hmm. But actually, if you embrace it, it actually works for you. But this is the journey that we're on. Yeah. It's part of the conversation. Okay. And Kerry, at this point, you've got yeah. to ask the question, do men even know how mental illness looks like? I would honestly say they, they deem it to be normal. When, when you don't know how to talk about what is going on inside you, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a normalized thing. And I say normalized in quotes mm -hmm. because it's not stuff we're willing to talk about at home. Um, as Eddie said, women have coping mechanisms. So for them, they'll easily talk it out. And you'll, you'll notice, ah, ata mimi, as, as there. For guys, between me and Eddie, and Eddie might either I disagree or agree, or maybe bolster the point even further, mm -hmm. is if I come and tell him hey, things are thick, the easiest thing for him to do is buy me a beer. <laughs> Let's go for a yeah. drink. Let's yeah. go for a drink. Or yeah. I'll tell him, Pambana na hali yako. Pambana na hali yako. Or yeah. 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 Raman. Jikaze ki daina. Jikaze. <laughs> and, and, to uh -huh. and to paint even this picture even grimmer, it does not start in adulthood. Mm -hmm. It starts at childhood. Mm -hmm. So your boys, you're playing football. And if one of you plays rough on the other, and I immediately cry, the other guys around me already branded me softy. Mm. And that's the beginning. Mm. And that's what I meant by the wiring the starts it's from a very, very tender age. Very okay. tender age. So men just don't know. So to you, uh -huh. you grow up knowing I'm supposed to bottle up issues. I'm mm -hmm. supposed to keep this mm -hmm. within me. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I'm not going to talk about it. Because I'll be judged. I'll be judged. Okay. Heavy. Speaking of judgment, <laughs> in retrospect, Ed, you've walked in these shoes too. Mm -hmm. Do you think there are pointers that you would have recognized that this is not normal? Unfortunately, with this wiring, and as I like the way you put it, it actually looks normal. And at the time, and again in retrospect, I did not understand that mental health and well-being plays a part in how I come out as a man. So everything that was happening to me at that, during that period, that very dark season that I went through, mm -hmm. was me trying to fight it and trying to deal with it in my own way. And what are these things you were fighting? Being, being ignorant. And remember, I was coming back from a background where I was already in the public eye. Mm -hmm. So I've got this pressure to stay and look in a particular way. Mm -hmm. And as a man uh, who's been exposed to that space, you'll do everything and anything to always look normal, no matter how much you're going through in life. Mm -hmm. And you could be breaking down, you could be shattering, and shattering in the sense that it also affects the people around you. In my case, it affected my family, it affected my marriage, it affected my children, it affected my siblings. So it, 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 it was a situation where I thought I'm dealing with it, and this is normal, this is how it's supposed to be, and the way I'm dealing with it is the best way I can. So there was a lot of, of course, selfishness. The ego had grown the size of an elephant because you think you cannot tell me how to deal with my <coughs> problems. I will, I will fight them the way I know. I know. Yeah. But now, now I know better. And it's just that I wish I knew this then, mm. that there's a way I can do this, and that is by asking for help. Okay. Saying and raising my hand and saying, you know what, I don't think I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And that then if you told me that it's okay not to be okay, I would disagree with you. I would, mm -hmm. I would fight you. I would totally, you know, just go against what you, what, 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 unfortunately at the time, you get more of the judgment from the outside world, which not just makes things works for, work, uh, work worse for you. Yeah. And then now you, you, your, your coping mechanisms actually not even helping you. They're working against you. Hmm. Kerry brings mm. in the point of introspection. Yeah. Everyone is saying something is off. Mm -hmm. You need to get this checked out because mm -hmm. this is not the normal. Yeah. But the guy will not look inward and say something is off because you can make society help you. Yeah. But if you cannot take it up yourself, it's another different play. Yeah. So introspection is not one of those things that naturally humans do. Exactly. 
whether man or woman, mm. naturally you never look towards you. You tend to think the other party is has, a problem. has the problem. Mm -hmm. So you're mirroring your issues that way. Mm. They never come this way. Um, if, if you look at Michael Jackson's song, he says, I'm, I'm scared of looking at the man in the mirror. Because this is, this is something about introspection, is that it forces you to look deep, so deep within you that you'll find this ugly monster. But and you're like, no, I'm not this way. Or I'm not ready to I'm deal not, with And this. I'm not ready to deal with this. Mm. And so you're like, no, I'll put it off till whenever. And then things become worse. Yeah. And when they're at the worst is when now you're like, okay, then perhaps mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the one who's in the... In most cases, yeah. worst comes to the worst, especially now the discussion is about men. It only hits you when it's at the, the worst. worst. When you're literally crawling. So, when you're, you're yeah, for example, if, if I may use my example, it, considering some of the trauma I amassed in life, being molested, watching a parents, my parents' marriage crumble, mm. um, being expected as a firstborn to always be at the top, you're not allowed to fail. You're, you're, you're basic, I like to joke and say, Firstborns are test tube babies. You're the experiment. <laughs> <laughs> so if it works for him, yeah. it works for the rest. Yeah, that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. But when, when, when I think in 20, 2018 December, that's when I realized now things are bad because I was having anxiety attacks mm -hmm. and, and, and suicidal thoughts. And it wasn't, it wasn't the first time. It was just okay, now this is, this is definitely wrong. But prior to that, there was something that led to me now having to go between stress, depression, and suicide within one week. Wow. And oh. so, mm -hmm. and, and, and I put a tweet, and I'm like, okay, fine. Whoever sees it, well and good. And fortunately enough, the, the few people actually who responded were men that I have come to become very close friends with now. Yeah. Excellent. Eddie, mm. that rings true for you too. There is a point you wanted to opt out, but your mother was a very strong support system. Yes, um, it was part of that journey, and um, it reaches a point where that journey, you'll try and do everything against what actually you're supposed mm. to be doing, against what is right, because you're thinking from that manly point of view, mm. I'm not supposed to be going through this. Yes. Let me try and... And, and do it a different way, but you're not uh, really um, uh, reaching out. So you're trying to deal in that. Remember depression, is, which is what I went through, is like a prison with no key, and the thoughts are the lock. Mm. So you keep on fighting with these thoughts constantly in your, in your space, that prison. And for me, it reached a point the first time when I tried to actually out myself is when I, I just uh, I got a flick of, of sense, no, there's more to this than just. But I was still going through my journey, and that's when I decided. Let me, and remember, I'd gone through this. Before I went and knocked on my mom's door, mm. it had been a journey of about two years, between 2015 and 2016. And that period was when I just kept everything and normalized in my own way mm -hmm. and that now forced me when that flicker came got that place now to put my head down which was just go back home mm. so i still had to fight with the de decision that eddie are you doing this you're 39 years old so i was already judging myself yeah with what yeah. will my friends think Same. when yeah. they see me walking out of my folks Mom's gate <laughs> going to work <laughs> but i i sort of now dealt with that because I had, I mean, I could only stay in my friend's house for so long because I'd just been auctioned. I had been thrown out of my house. I just had to figure out a way. Mm. And that dealt with that situation at the time. The journey still goes on. So, so that helped. And she really helped in terms of just coming to terms with what I was going through at the time. 
Okay, and uh, Ed is bringing out something that is very crucial and critical yeah. in the day we are living in. The role of a man in society vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis the reality. We are living in harsh economic times. Yes. You're the provider. Everybody is looking up to you and it's not working. Yeah. Do you think this is fueling the numbers we are seeing today, Gary? I possibly think so, mm -hmm. to a great extent. Um, I was just looking at it the other day. Um, I hold a degree in finance. I didn't enjoy the job, so I figured, uh, well, I might try to do something else. But there are many other students, especially male students, who have spent six, seven, four years studying, and they come from very impoverished backgrounds, or maybe privileged backgrounds. They come out here, and reality starts hitting them. There are no jobs. What are you supposed to do? Do you go back to your dad and or family to start asking them for handouts? Do you push a handcart in the streets of Nairobi mm -hmm. and some of your good friends see you doing this and they laugh at you or jeer? And they're like, oh, look at him. He's from, you know, it's, mm. there are these crazy expectations that we put on men. Forget, forget even from family, but just within ourselves, even from coming from internally from ourselves, mm -hmm. and it's unhealthy. Okay. It's unhealthy. It's unhealthy to, to exert a system beyond its limit. You have a laptop on your desk, so it's only meant to do certain things. If you push it beyond that point, guess what it does? It crashes, it crashes. And, and it shuts down. And that's the same thing. The human body, the way it's designed, it can only handle so much pressure. Mm -hmm. And if it can't get beyond that point, the brain is intelligent enough to say, you know what? Shut down. I will make. For survival Just sake. Just word to yeah. that. His point, of course, is the way now the world or the society around us reacts to, to us. us. Mm. But remember, we also now have our own self expectations. Yeah. So you're adding that expectation, Eddie, you should have been here. Eddie, you should have used that degree to, to achieve to this, yeah. look at them now. They are laughing at you. So you're, also you're dealing with both sides. And mm -hmm. introspection comes into play. And again, it can also either work for you or not. not on, or not. So you're dealing with your own self-expectations in trying to make these other people happy. happy. Mm -hmm. And you are constantly, as one big budget, and you're also budgeting yourself to, to reach these expectations or even just to, pers to supersede them. So it's both ways. And we and say out. we are our worst critics yes. and at the end of the enemies. day. Yeah. I am, I, that, that much I know. It's, it's the most self-deprecating thing that I have done to myself. Because mm. I look at my friends and they're like, wow, 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 wow. He just bought a new car. <laughs> He's got married. <laughs> I'm here. I'm single. I'm living in a space that if I do this, I'm kicking my <laughs> the cooker. Best seat, yeah. <laughs> and so it, it's, it's so much internal. Mm -hmm. And, and in your head, you, f you find that it's very shameful. Mm. When really, it's just life. It's just life. It's okay. just life. Now we're talking about men trying to make it happen, keep yeah. it together. It's not working and you're crumbling. There's something else that's also in the, in the day to day that has changed the dynamics of it. And uh, I believe you were at the last public hearings of the Mental Health Task Force. Mm. And uh, one Weldon Karos from the Gaming Awareness Society of Kenya brought up the impact of gambling and betting that has fueled all this. And this is what he had to say. It was that me and my team was uh, a man who, who, who gambled his dowry, all of it. Now they had to break up with the fiancé before, before everything. Eddie, you were in that sitting. People laughed, but the reality of what he just said will hit home. You are ready to gamble everything, yeah, just to keep the face. But at the end of the day, you are breaking and shattering many other aspects of your life. How is social media, betting and gambling also fueling this and the connection between that and mental health? It's, it's been proven that men are also affected in that aspect in a very big way. Mm -hmm. And it's what we've just, the previ previous point we've just mm -hmm. had, yeah. men trying to, to deliver their beat as men. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily that I love gambling. It's not necessarily that I love betting. But you find we are, uh, men at that stage now, jobs are not available. Yeah. There's an avenue here which I feel, fine, it's a quick, easy 
according to you as a man to make money. But then again, it's got its limitations. So you find it gets to the point where now it's good to start having these regulations to try and control mm -hmm. where this is leading to. Because now it looks like an easy way out. But now, unfortunately, um, some of us men are not willing to go out there and, do, and toil for actual, you know, just do some honest work and just mm. get your income and support your family or support yourself. It just looks like an easy way out. So with that pressure on some of us men, you feel I need to pay rent. Unfortunately, you will do the unthinkable, get money, even loan money to go and play, thinking you're going to make up for that. And of course, the connection and the addiction to it makes you get into it deeper deeper and deeper and i really appreciate what you brought up i appreciate that that's a, a group is there championing that mm -hmm. to sort of just try and make an understanding that there should be some regulations that would also help because it will play a part in helping this conversation about how it's affecting us as men mm -hmm. as and part it's of that mental health. and it's a pressure point right it yeah, is a pressure and point. And, yeah. and, and, and bringing out guys gambling and then you mentioned social, social media. media um social media. social media has become this marathon that we run and you don't want to break it in 159. You, you, you want to break it in one hour. Mm. It's, it's in less. Who, who, who's, who's gotten what first? Who's, mm. who's, who's done what first? Um, I've seen people who would rather go hungry for three weeks straight so that they can buy a certain shoe and be said that they've got it. I'm They're the first it. ones to get it. Mm. There's some people who have basically chosen to live in the most deplorable of conditions, but have certain things in within their lives, a phone, a TV, or anything, just to look like they're ahead. And in the end, they're like, this is unsustainable. Mm. It, it becomes really unsustainable. It's the conversations we're going to have. We're going to bash each other. I'm going to look at Eddie. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to pick on a physical feature. I'm a total stranger. I have never met him. Mm. And I'll hammer him to shreds, guess what will happen? Eddie will start feeling bad about himself. Mm. He'll go away. Or if not that, he'll be like, oh, so you want us to play this game? And he'll find something else to do. So mm. it's a vicious cycle. It's yeah, so we're just going to go vicious, round and round and round. Vicious cycle, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's, a, it's, it's a part of us now <laughs> that, that we that cannot do without we can, we social without. media. Yeah. 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 But then again, it's the understanding of the power of, that it of has. The tool. And the, and the tool, mm. using it resourcefully using yeah. it well to yeah. be able either to even yeah. make an income mm. but unfortunately the bigger chunk of, of us, us are using that it. for matching up yes. and he's right i'd rather live in that space where you can stretch the, the, touch the gas cooker <laughs> yeah. but the, my pictures and my my images on social Instagram. media platforms yeah. are top are trending so definitely another pressure point. Yes. Now, yeah. let's get into the solutions. You've walked in these shoes and you've seen what works and mm. what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And you put together a forum to give men a safe space to actually speak because men have said, we don't have a safe space where we can go speak. Yeah. Talk about that and the importance of this going forward for, their, for men's well-being. Well, it's true. Men, to be able to start their, this conversation, need a safe space and a trusted space. So we, we came up with a concept where we would like to collaborate, or we are collaborating with barber shops, and also, more importantly, training barbers to become mental health ambassadors. So how are we doing this? The barber shop for, for years, traditionally, and I can see Kimani has yeah. also. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 unless you're bald or so yeah. balding like me. <laughs> it's a place where we men feel safe, and that's why you find men, some men would just go to the barber shop because the Kim Jonesy guy is his pal. They'll mm. sit and talk about politics. They'll talk about the latest trends in the, in the motor world. They'll talk about um, games. games, sports, uh, Premier League, and all that. So the thinking behind this is, what if we use this space to add another conversation, which is where men use that safe space to engage about their well-being, mm. to engage about their mental health, and more importantly, find a space where they can reach out and ask for help. So how do we do this? We empower the barber to become a mental health ambassador. We're not going to change them to therapists or psychologists or counselors. All we are making the barbers to become, of course, with their endorsement, is to become signposts. If I walk in and sit on that barber's chair, the barber would be able to know how to ask me the right questions, how to listen to me as a client, a man client, how to 
to, to be able to understand what I'm going through if we have that conversation without being judgmental. And fourthly, being able to guide me to where I should go. So the training will empower the barber to be able to say, I've heard you, I understand what you're going through, mm -hmm. and I feel you need extra help, an expert help. So they will have contacts. They will have a cat catalog of mm -hmm. contacts for specialists within mm -hmm. the town. So the driving aspect of this initiative is the barber becoming the signpost. And of course, in co collaboration with the barber shop to make it a place where you walk in and you know, I'm safe here. I can raise my hand and tell my barber who's shaved me for 15 years, yes. come out. And this and this is going on in my life. Okay. What do you think? And you'll be doing that from a point of information because you'll know this space, this guy has been trained and is a mental health ambassador. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, we want to see this happening uh, nationally. It's a, it's a long-term um, agenda mm -hmm. to be able to be part of this conversation. Yeah. Yes. All right. We cannot afford to not emphasize the role of therapy. Both it's of you have important. walked in these shoes. Yes. So as much as we're doing something on our end, you need to go the extra mile to get the help you exactly. need. Yeah. Speak about that, Kerry, even as we close. Um, so therapy is not what you see on TV. That's the first thing I want to tell you. It's not. It's if, if for those guys who watch Suits, this mm. is not a Louis, the couch. This no. is not Louis Litt, <laughs> yeah. and a German guy. <laughs> no, it's not. It, it's it's a it's a space where you will be helped to understand yourself better. Um, we're not looking for all the answers in the world, but mm. hopefully you'll be able to understand yourself better. Um, be willing to put in the effort that your psychiatrist, as far as medication goes, is concerned. Take your meds, do not skip a dosage. I have done that and it has been, it's not an experience I'd wish on anyone. Um, when you go to your psychologist, talk about it. Mm. It's a free, it's a, it's a safe space by the, by the fact that he's governed by certain laws. Mm -hmm. So whatever he says, it remains there. Attend your sessions regularly. Um, for those of you who have gone, who need to have conversations with your parents based on things that they did or trauma that they did, at some point when you feel confident to do it, plug them in. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Plug them in. Um, the reason why I say that is so that all of you are hurting and you just don't know. And if they understand your hurt, they'll be able to explain theirs and you'll find a bridge and you'll be able to work things out. Um, and it actually gives life to the so psychosocial uh, support yeah, that you uh, need, it, right? It actually does. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it happen. Thankfully, my mom and my sister are both psychologists. Ah. But they can't do that in a no, family they can't. setting. Yeah. But we've been able to have very hard conversations. And yeah, so, so far, I mean, stuff that has happened over 20-something years now is being slowly being mm -hmm. resolved. And I'm learning about myself every day. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This so is a and the Kinyozi guy, by yeah, the way. For yeah. sure. Go talk to him. <laughs> talk to him. Yeah. True. It's very, very important. It's, it's a nice place. It's a if good you place have to homeboys, start. if you have, let me call them homeboys, uh, if you've got dudes who have been around you for too long, mm. gather up once in a while. Don't drink, but talk, talk about what's happening in your life. It's the best therapy. Okay. Talking. Mm. Talk, yeah. Talk. I'm a woman and I can say it works for us. So <laughs> I pray that moment actually <laughs> tap into it. Thank Gentlemen, you. Kerry Kimani and of course Eddie Kimani, thank you for thank being you for so that. open about thank your you. lives and also giving inspiration to other men even as they pursue mental wellness.